welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone is doing well. So, Subriel Matias takes on Shojahan Ergashev this coming Saturday. I think this is the one that most hardcore fans are really excited about. It's a great fight. I made a, um, a fight breakdown video. If you missed that, I'll leave the link up here. But I did miss a couple of things. And there are a few things that I think could be the keys to victory for both fighters. So in this video, we're going to speak about a couple of things that I think both guys need to do in order to really secure victory. So let's get into the video. Shout out to all the subscribers. Thank you very much for tuning in. As always, peace and love to you. And much gratitude to anybody new locked in as well. Welcome along. I hope you enjoy the content. And we are going to go over the keys to victory in this fight. This is a mouth-watering matchup. I can't wait for this fight. Saturday the 25th. It's on the undercard of, um, excuse the train, uh, Demetrius, uh, David Benavidez, Demetrius Andrade. And it's actually not even really the co-main. It should, it should... It really should be in its own event, but nonetheless, I'm glad it's on a good uh, stage and I'm glad it's on a pay-per-view and I'm glad it's getting the attention because us boxing fans have been pushing it hard. But, um, look, there are some things that I think both guys could do to, you know, give themselves a better chance to win. So I'm going to pull up a lot of footage right now. But with regards to Subriel Matias, let's start with him. I just watched his last fight against uh, Ponce, okay? It's, there's not a full fight going around. I've seen a few highlights here and there, but that was the most defensively responsible I've seen him. <laughs> he actually kept his hands up for once, but he was calm, all right? He was very calm in the face of adversity, in the face of a serious amount of punches from Ponce, who can punch a little bit. And he was he was calm, he was poised, and he didn't overreact to you know the onslaught. He kept his hands up, he kept his shape better than I've seen it, and he was just able to survive the onslaught. And like, look, the, the way the analogy is is right. If there's a storm coming, you need to batten down the hatches and prepare for what's coming. Okay, and it does seem to most boxing fans. Obviously, we know uh, Ergashev's record, and we've seen he can really, really punch, and he can really get his whole body behind it. When he sets up those shots, he steps in with that pendulum step. He, he either blinds his opponent with that little pouring jab like that, or he sweeps his opponent. And then if you watch, he has a full wingspan like this, and he steps into a shot, okay? That is vicious. And when he, if he catches Matias with one of those... In the body especially, I spoke about that in the fight video. That is going to be a massive problem. So Matias has got to keep his cool, he's got to keep his hands up, but also he can't when he did this and he's been changed, he's been getting a lot better. But against Drew Kimbayev, the other side, the only Southpaw he's faced, or more recently anyway, he was walking in, cross walking a little or, or cross stancing. Changing his stance, okay, which he does. His footwork is a little bit arbitrary. He doesn't really make much sense at times. He needs to keep that under control, but he needs to keep his hands up and not move his arm, you know, just by casually down by its side when Juk uh, when Ergashev is in the mid range. That is a massive no no. That is a big key to victory. Big big key for what you should shouldn't do for Matthias, all right? Because and it, and it applies to Ergashev too. If he sees that. He can come in and, and, and sweep the hand and, and shoot that body shot off or the straight left. But the body shots are the ones. But Matthias needs to clean up his footwork, but not just walk in with that lead hand, that jab. Because what, what I pointed out in the in the, the fight breakdown, it can be stiff, right? You can, you can have this hand here where it can't be sweeped or you can use it to block like that. But you need your feet under you. All right, that's really important. It's it's to do with science. Okay, you need the ground to punch, but you also need the ground to defend yourself. Right? If I'm walking in with both my feet like that, staggering in, you're going to get moved around so hard, and the punch is going to affect you so much more. Whereas if you actually have your base under you and your balance, you can block shots, so you can keep it tight like a turtle shell, basically. Right? So Matthias needs to keep his hands up. Simple, basic boxing, really, in terms of. That's the most important thing to do. Keep your hands up. Just not walk in aimlessly in the mid-range because 
when Ergashev comes bouncing in with that pendulum step and gets his full leverage behind it and Matias is coming onto a shot, that's a recipe for disaster. <laughs> that's a recipe for disaster. So Matias, key to victory, key to victory, calm down, all right? If there's an onslaught coming, don't react so wildly. And look, he, like I said, in the, in the Ponce fight, he didn't. Stay cool, stay collected, understand it's a 12 round fight. Let, let Ergashev get his shots off, but he's gonna, he's gonna land and he might hurt, but he got to minimize the opportunities, especially downstairs. As I mentioned, I really think that's the key for Ergashev. So stay calm. Don't just flap your lead hand out there and don't just walk with your feet crossing each other, switching stances where your feet are, you know, they're not planted and you can't defend yourself properly. That is very important, especially against a power puncher. In terms of Ergashev, he is very erratic, okay, because he's so powerful, right? He's got that explosive power that I often refer to as like, you know, it's like Lord of the Rings, you know, like Gollum, that character where, or anybody that grabbed the ring was just obsessed with power, you know, they couldn't, they couldn't get it off them. And he's like that, he's got so much power, he can't, he gets excited to throw it. And when he comes in, when he's fighting people, you know, he just come in really erratically, okay, and he'll fall in on the shots, okay, but look, there's obviously a, a catch-22 to this because he could get so much leverage, he could wipe out Matthias like that, but when he falls in, he's going to fall into Matthias's zone, into his little spider's web, <laughs> which I spoke about in the, in the breakdown. And, you know, that's when Matthias can, you know, obviously have an advantage because Ergashev doesn't really know how to, I say really because I haven't seen it. I'm not saying he can't in terms of clinching. He definitely can't fight on the inside. He's very limited with his, 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 you know, outside mid, mid range work where he bounces in and out and uses that lead hand. He doesn't really have a jab outside of using it defensively a little bit, but it's, you know, it's not an educated jab at all. It's, he barely uses the jab conventionally. He uses it to pour and set up his shots for sure. A little bit defensively, like I said, but, you know, he, 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 he comes in really erratically and he needs to contain himself a little bit. It's going to be a big stage. It's a big fight. He's talked about retirement after this. That was crazy. Do you guys see that? Retirement. Either way, I do not like hearing that from a fighter when they talk about retirement. I don't think I've ever heard that at this stage. I'm sure a fighter said it in their, when they're a bit older. You know, and they've got like a fight in the, in the works or whatever, but he's talked about that. That's weird. I wonder if that's <laughs> mind games or whatever it is. I saw a press conference yesterday that was from a few days ago that was pretty calm. Um, that I couldn't, you know, I didn't stick around for all of it, but it seemed pretty respectful for the most part. But I might have missed something because someone in the comments said something about the, putting someone in a hospital, stuff like that. I don't like to hear that kind of thing. But like I said, will it add more fuel to Matthias? later on probably but he needs to he needs to calm down both of them need to calm down actually because uh, you know look again this has got a double-edged sword because you could go in there and Ergashev could be wild and wipe out Matthias I get it but I just think you give yourself a better chance if you just try to cool, cool down don't fall in on your shots don't wind up so much where like you're going to fall in because that's why he falls in Ergashev like I said his wingspan is uh, like as far as you can go coming in on a shot of course you're going to fall in you don't need to go that wild I don't think like your shots are going to land just calm down don't be so erratic with your footwork and don't fall in on all, on your shots because when you fall in like I said he's going to be in range Matthias is going to be there depending on what kind of referee how big the ring is all this stuff is going to matter it's going to matter so and Ergashev look he needs to clinch he needs to get his clinch game going just hold on to him all right if you're in that situation and Matthias is teeing off on you hold on to him just grab him even if you have to deduct a point I know that sounds a bit wild, but you're going to want to hold on to him to give yourself a bit of space because he's not going to stop if it gets to that point where, you know, he's the fight's taken over and Ergashev is, is unable to defend himself. Matias has figured his power out. He's taken his power. Hold on to him. Grab him for dear life. Do whatever you have to do. But 
those are the keys for me if you have any keys shoot them in the comment section i'd love to hear from you shout out to all the new subscribers peace and love thank you very much i really appreciate it the train's a bit noisy it's night time here it's thanksgiving tomorrow whatever you guys do enjoy it enjoy it with your family whatever you're doing have a great time i'll see you in a few days on sunday i'll do a post fight video then peace i'm out Boxing. Boxing.